Well, I'm I'm alive and functioning. Oh, that's good. You're doing better than me, then. <laughs> uh, you're just functioning? Yeah, barely. <laughs> uh, we've been uh, we've been doing interviews for the last two days, so I'd, I know how many spots there are on the wallpaper in this hotel room now. <laughs> oh, it's good. We've had some, done some good interviews, talked to some cool people. Uh, it's been really good. Uh, that's good. I'm gonna, I don't know, because they said that things are a little off screw here, I'm gonna try to, I don't know, but I'm gonna start with that. Uh, okay, in Sabbath, this is going, you know, the hell going back. Um, okay, what exactly happened that you left Sabbath and decided to do Skyclad, and then I heard, you know, basically what happened, like Andy Schneep and Simon Jones and all those guys, I mean, just uh, to get some, find out kind of like, you know, five years later or whatever, what happened. Well, b well basically, I, I, I left Sabbath because of the musical and personality differences. Um, myself and Fraser, the bass player, were becoming more and more disillusioned with the musical direction that Sabbath was taking. It became clear that we weren't going to be able to experiment with different musical ideas, which is what we wanted to do. And the whole situation basically put Fraser off music for life. You know, he works in a printing shop now. He's, uh, he's not gone back to music at all. Um, so, you know, really I got sick of it. Um, Andy Sneap wasn't the easiest person to get on with either. And when you're together with those people for a, for a long time, they do get, they get on your nerves a little bit, you know. Yeah, just, yeah. But, I don't know, basically, I don't know, somebody once said the best way to... So, you know, lose a friend is move in with him. <laughs> so, you know, just making the presumption that, you know, you're just together so much, you basically can't. It was, it, it's important, you know, that you're, you're, you're friends with the people you're in a band with because, you know, we did nine months touring in, in Europe with the uh, with the LP that's just been released here, you know, the Prince of the Poverty Line. We did nine months with that, and you have to be able to get on with the people you're working with, or it'd be, really be a nightmare. All right. Um... I don't know, just basically, I don't know, closing up the Sabbath thing. Um, now, did you write the, I heard you wrote the lyrics for Morning Has Broken? Oh, no, not at all. I had nothing at all to do with the album. All right, okay, that's just what the rumor had it. No, you know, I, it, was, it was Andy Sneap who wrote those. All right, because pretty much, you know, somebody told me that, uh, you know, I asked him, like, well, I thought he was, you know, Martin was in Skyclad, and he's like, oh, Martin wrote the lyrics. I'm like, well, how's it sound? He's like, well, basically say your money yeah. <laughs> so no, like, I didn't write the lyrics though. okay I was just curious about that I, um, the only thing I heard I heard um, that the songs that were on the album were the, on the Morning Has Broken album with the demos that Andy was playing to me when I decided to leave and when Fraser decided to leave as well we listened to those songs and just really got, got really disillusioned with it all and I didn't want to have I didn't want to have anything to do with that that, that LP you know alright um how did you, I don't know, how did you, did you know Steve Ramsey and Graham English from before, or um, how did, basically, how did you guys get together and do Skyclad? We'd, we'd known them for a few years before. Um, Steve actually tour managed uh, Sabbath on our uh, first first tour that we did in um, in, uh, in the UK, and that was really good fun, you know, and, and um, Graham did a bit of roading for us as well, you know, and they were really really cool guys and you know we had such good fun with them that um you know when when i left sabbath uh, the band that they were in pariah w wasn't really doing that much due to uh, record company problems mm -hmm. and so um when i left sabbath i didn't really know what i wanted to do and steve said why don't we do some songs together you know and see what happens which is how the how the band started really all right um i don't know pretty much in my discography or whatever, uh, you know, you have the Wayward Sons of Mother Earth, and then I, I don't know, I, I don't know it must have been a good seven or eight months ago, I finally got the uh, Jonah's Ark on import, and the thing is, well, there's basically a couple CDs in there that's missing, and I noticed uh, on the Jonah's Ark, David, P I don't know if I pronounce his last name right, Pew? Pew, David Pew, it's a funny spelling. Um, how did, you know, when did he join the crew, and how, you know, how did, uh, how did you decide to get another guitar player? Well, well, uh, Dave was actually, um, he was uh, guitar roading for us, and he was in a band called uh, DAM, which were a, a British uh, noise act at the time.
time. Um, and he, he rode it for us and he was, you know, we, we heard him play and he was so good that we just had to get him in the band and we got on with him so well. We got him in and Chris Jenkins for, on violin and keyboard for the second LP, which is called A Burnt Offering for the Bone Idol. Mm -hmm. um, we got them and the, all the guys in the band have stayed the same since then, you know, the same lineup. The only thing we've had is a, is a few violin players change. And, um, uh, the, I believe her last name's Ho Kath Howell. Uh, Kath Howell left the band just before Christmas last year. And we've got a new violin player now called Georgina Biddle, which is spelled B I D D L E, and she's actually playing on the on the follow-up album to Prince of the Poverty Line. And she's a full-time member of the band now. Um, Kath was um, was planned as a temporary replacement for for Britta, and she only really committed to being in the band for one year. And in that year, she was on tour for nine months. And I think it got a, a bit too much for her because she had, uh, you know, relationship commitments in England and a college course that she had to return to. Mm. So, um, you know, we, we had to look for someone else. And I think it's a case of third time lucky. You know, I think we've, we've found the right person now. All right. Um, also, how come your, the violin players are all female? Is it just basically you find that, you know, it's not a, it's just a, you know, this person plays violin and they do a good job, or is it, you know, I, just... I think um, it's more more girls seem to play violin than guys, you know, and it's something that we, we consciously want to do as a band because, you know, metal music has a very sexist image, mm -hmm. and we want to get away from that. We want to show girl musicians that they can be in a band with guys or start bands by themselves without having to show the, the tits or their ass, you know, they can they can be on stage and be equal to the to the guys who are in the band. Alright. Um kinda moving away a little bit. Okay. You did a tour with Manowar? Uh huh. In, in Europe, all over Europe. Okay. Just you know, I I've kinda you know what's it like touring with Manowar? It was it was very interesting they're, they're very I don't know how, how popular they are here in the States, but in, in Europe and in Germany in particular, um, they're, they're absolutely huge. Mm -hmm. the, the tour they did in Germany was the, uh, the biggest tour to go there um, uh, since Metallica played there. You know, it was thousands and thousands of people. And we'd, we'd supported them before as Sabbath. Sabbath supported Man of War all over Europe. Mm -hmm. And they, they actually asked for Skyclad to be the, to be the support band. It was a, a weird experience, you know, their, their music doesn't really compare at all with ours or, or the lyrics or what the bands are about. But for us at the time, um, when we'd released our, our second LT, A Burnt Offering for the Bone Idol, it was, um, you know, the, the perfect chance for us, that, like a stepping stone to play to a lot of people in Europe. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why we chose to do the tour, really. Um, just on, on a side note, uh, I know uh, I've never been to a Man War live show, but from what I understand, they have uh, weapons and whatnot. When uh, the, you know, they have they be, hmm? yeah, they do quite a lot of weird, weird things live. They, um, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it, they put they put on a good show, really. You know, I, I, I can't really agree with some of the lyrics because it's you know not not what Skyclad's about. No, you know, no. but um, but it, it was really good for us to play in front of that many people. You know, it was. It was cool of them to offer us the tour. You know, it really was. Um, I don't know, in your music, you have a, I don't know, I get the impression of a definite message, you know, where basically, you know, things aren't just given to you. You have to respect, you know, you have to show respect to things around you and whatnot. And I mean, you're sitting there playing this show, you know, and all these people are like, you know, sky clad right on. And then after the show, you know, I must be, uh, I'm going to make the, you know, here in America, I'm, going to make the assumption that same over there, you know, after the show, you know, these people are saying, you know, yeah, you're great, and then they see all these, like, plastic cups laying all over and beer cans just, you know, sitting in garbage cans and, you know, just stuff all over the floor. I mean, doesn't that kind of bother you? It, it does because um, well, we don't actually have that in, in England. Um, all, the, all the glasses that you, you get at the concert halls are all, um, you know, like really tough plastic glasses, and they just wash them and they reuse them. Oh, 
not like, you know, the, like here it must be like the things you get from McDonald's with cola in, you know, like a paper cup. Yeah. We don't have that, the, the clubs that we play in the UK and Europe, they actually, you know, use the glasses again, which is, which is good, you know. So there isn't that much, um, you know, garbage everywhere after the shows, it's not like that. Right, yeah, it was just... I mean, I really, it's it's hard writing the lyrics I do to, you know, sort of justify that we're travelling round in a in a tour bus that's, you know, drinking drinking gasoline and and things like that, and the electric we use for the lights and the PA at the show. But there really is no other way to get the music across. It's a it's a vicious circle, you know. And and you're right, it'd be nice to find another alternative. But at the moment, if you want to be in a band, that's you know, that's what you have to do. Hopefully we do more good through the lyrics and the damage we we do to the to the environment using these resources to go on tour. So, you know, even if, you know, say there's, you know, you play a show of, I don't know, like, like eight or 9,000 people or whatnot, you know, say, you know, even just a handful, like 150 of them really, you know, know what you're talking about and, you know, they, they're conscious of the effort even though, you know, those are, for the benefit of the 150 over the, you know, the rest of them, yep. you know, it's, it makes it worth it. Absolutely. I mean, we, I think, you know, the people who come and see us, we get a very, um, a very wide crossover of different types of people at our concerts, from, from uh, young guys who are into, you know, death and thrash metal to um, older people to bikers who are maybe 45 years old to alternative kids, um, kids with dreadlocks, punk rockers, you know, everything. Because we do so many different crossover types of music. We have uh, a very friendly sort of skyclad family atmosphere at the concerts. Everyone goes crazy and everyone has a good time and nobody gets hurt. You know, our fans seem to be quite intelligent and they, they look after each other. And if we see any trouble at the front, you know, we, we'd stop the concert. You know, we, we try and look after our fans and we ask them to look after us and each other, you know, when we play a concert. Um, I think, uh, like I mentioned earlier, was, uh, I don't know, there's been a complete lack of skyclad material in America. I mean, the last thing, you know, if you just went to the store, you know, you could, you could pick up Wayward Sons, and, uh, you know, since then you've had, what, four, four albums come out since then, I believe. Um, now that you're getting, hopefully, you know, redistributed in America. Uh, are you going to be doing anything in America as far as touring? or that, That's what we're trying to plan at the moment. We've got our manager here with us in New York. And while we're doing the press, he's going to visit um, lots of different people to try and book a tour for us. Um, we hope to make it over here to the States uh, the middle or the end of October this year. That, that's our, you know, that's our goal at the moment. But, um, you know, we, we've not got any tour dates or any idea what what band we'd be touring with. You know, we'd, we're just uh, waiting to see what happens, see how the how the Prince of the Poverty line is received in the U.S. Um, also, are you recording another album now? We're, we're mixing. It was uh, recorded in, in England, and we're mixing it in, um, in Providence in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. So when myself and Steve, the guitarist, have finished here, we've, we've finished tomorrow, doing the press, we're, we're going back up to, to Rhode Island to mix the, the follow-up LP. All right, well, uh, what's the title? <laughs> uh, the title of the album is The Silent Wales of Luna Sea, and that's um, written uh, as in wh Wales as in the large mammal in the sea, All right. and Luna is like on the moon, Luna, L-U-N-A-R, right. Sea is S-E-A. So it's the silent whales of lunacy. Right. Um, okay. It's quite hard to explain that over the phone unless you see it written down. Some of the interviews I've done, there's been a very bad telephone line, and it's been uh, <laughs> taking me about 20 minutes to explain the album title. Well, yeah. we, we don't have the simplest album titles. It's not easy. No, it's not no. that easy. <laughs> no. Um, out of curiosity, uh, and pretty much all that. And all the albums, you know, the Sky Clyde albums, you always, I, you know, you leave out like a one light, you know, like a one liner, you know, may your guardian spirits always watch over you. Uh, we did that on the first LP, um, and 
Um, I think it's like it's on Prince of the Poverty Line as well. I thought it was in uh, I thought it was in Jonah's Ark too. It could be. You could be right. Mate. All right. Anyways, um, how come? You know, just uh, I don't know. I guess pretty much pondering uh, what religious back. You know, if you had, I don't know, if it'd be proper to say religion. What would it? You know, what is it? Well, I, I would consider myself to be a pagan, and um, the um, the quickest way to explain it, I um, I believe that you know, it, it's best if I explain it like this. You know, the way Christianity says that the world was created by God for, for mankind. You know, and this world is like our playground. I believe the opposite of that. I believe that we are a part of the world. We are. We're no better than other animals that we share this planet with, and 99% of the time we're far, far worse than any any animal. Uh, the damage that we do to the world, uh, we, we are part of this planet, this this world is like, um, you know, our mother, uh, our home, it's the only world we've got, and when our planet dies, then we die too, there's, there's nowhere else we can, you know, run away to. Um, but that's the easiest way to explain it. It's, uh, I, you know, I think people should have respect for, for the planet, for the living things we share this planet with, and for fellow human beings. You know, regardless of uh, race, sex, creed, colour, anything like that. You know, we should um, res respect everything that's around us. I mean, there's, you know, the, the number of people on the planet are getting shorter, and, you know, pretty much uh, more and more damage is being done, you know, now than, you know, in the 20th century than, you know, had been, shoot, you know, in all of, you know, prehistory and whatnot added together. I mean, just so much damage has been done. Um, pretty much, I don't know, do you see the future that, the, that it's going to get better, or? I really don't know, to be honest, I don't think things look very good at the moment unless the politicians and the people in power actually do something about the state of our planet. Um, I think we're, we're going to be in a terrible mess, you know, in a few years' time. And it's got all going to happen a lot quicker than people think. Um, I think that's why we try and point out these, these things through the lyrics, because unless people actually start doing something immediately about these problems, then then life on this planet is just, um, you know, doomed, really. Maybe it's too late already, I don't know. I, I like to think on the positive side, but uh, every time you turn on the TV, it's, um, it, it doesn't look very good, you know, from, from, where, from where I stand. Yeah, I, 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 I don't me personally, I just don't have too, I don't know, too much hope in people, and, you know, no. I really... I, th I think you know that I think more bands and um, more more people should speak out about what's happening and try and get something done. You know, because uh, it doesn't seem like a, there's a, a a lot of things being done to to uh, turn around the damage we're doing. Um, just I don't know, not uh, a trend that's you know being noticed over here in America. Um, Everybody needs like a little click to get into and whatnot, a little cause. And the big cause over here seems to mostly be legalized marijuana. Um, you know, pretty much, you know, the bands don't do, you know, I don't, you know, I, I have no idea, you know, they really just don't say too much about it or just, you know, write songs about legalizing marijuana and whatnot. Um, does that, I don't know if you come across those bands a lot or whatnot, but, you know, pretty much that's such a, you know, a superficial, temporary thing. I mean, they should try to get into the big picture. Sure, I mean, that, what, what does it matter if you can smoke a joint if you've not got a world left to smoke it in, you know? It's, um, it seems like a, um, you know, a pretty stupid thing to put all this energy into, into legalizing that. I mean, I'm, I, I personally think mar marijuana should be legalized. I'm very against hard drugs. I think hard drugs are very evil. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think marijuana is a, a better drug than the, the drugs that the government sells to people, like alcohol and tobacco, which they make a lot of tax money on, you know? Yeah. Um, at least, you know, 
pe people, when they smoke marijuana, it doesn't make them want to go out and beat people up and make them aggressive, like yeah. alcohol, you know. It's not it's not addictive like alcohol. Or it's tobacco. Not your liver, you know, so, uh, you know, I think marijuana is a much better drug but than than alcohol or, or tobacco, but, you know, I think there are more important issues that people should be campaigning for that they could put their energy into. Um, pretty much <clears throat> when you, I don't know, when you look at the problems in Europe and the problems in America, uh, which one, I don't know, did you ever get to a point where, uh, how should I say, which one do you personally see as being worst and needs the most work? I, I don't know. I think the, the problems we have at the moment, the social and, and environmental problems are very worldwide. You know, this is, um, I've only been three days here in the States and I've not had time to watch the news or TV very much, but I think the same, the same kind of problems are happening here as, as what's happening in Europe. You know, I, I think it's about time something got done. I, d I don't like the, the system of government that we have in the whole of Western society. You know, it seems very geared to money and profit when it's about time people start thinking about human beings, you know, what's really important in the world. Pretty much I'm getting to the end here. Uh, just out of, I don't know, out of just a curiosity, uh, do you believe in a type of afterlife? Uh, yes, I do. I think I think human beings have something about them that makes them special. Like um, I believe all all living things have a life force in them. You know, for every every tree and every rock and every river, you know, has has a life force to it that makes it exist. I think I think that life on this planet has a purpose and. I'd, I'd hate to see human beings screw all that up, you know, through greed and selfishness. Well, <laughs> a lot of work to be done. A lot of work. Sure is. But, um, but also, I don't know, I guess in closing, Martin Walkier's perfect world, uh, what would it be? Um, I'd, well, I mean, I, I know it's the thing that all the all the beauty queens say at the the Miss World contest, but I'd like to see a world without hungry people. I'd like to see the government stop spending money on weapons that kill people and start trying to save save hungry people and look after the the all life on this planet. You know, not just human life. Let's try and you know turn things around a little bit, or at least try. You know. If, Okay, maybe it's too late already, but at least we should try, you know. It's, um, you know, a, a bit stupid not to. Okay. In, uh, in England, I, like over here, they have sanctuaries and whatnot for animals and whatnot. Over in Europe, are there sanctuaries too? Because from, you know, I've always had the impression that basically in England's just completely packed and whatnot. Uh, no, it's not. There's some beautiful countryside in, uh, in England. It's, um... You know, it's like ev like everywhere else. There are bits of unspoiled countryside, but they're getting smaller and smaller every year because they're you know they they need the land to build to build houses and factories, which you know I I, I can't see uh, I can't see any solution to it. But I, th I think the people the people actually in in control should start thinking of one really quick. You know, we do we do have some beautiful countryside in in England. It's not like maybe the Maybe you see the worst side of it from TV shows from England, you know, you, it doesn't look very nice, you know, parts of it, like the big industrial cities look horrible, you know, I don't, I don't like them, I'm a countryside kind of person. Because there's, well, uh, basically, I, don't know, I guess I like to be out in the middle of nowhere just for the fact there's no people, uh -huh. <laughs> but I don't know, I, um, if somebody, you know, were, was to see, uh, you know, see that, you know, just was browsing through the Skyclad, you know, albums, hopefully when they get, you know, distributed around here in America, would it be an accurate uh, assumption to say uh, the members of Skyclad are, like, Renaissance reactors? Uh, possibly. I think, I think we're a, we're a little, a little troop of, um, of British eccentric lunatics, you know, uh, who, are, who are on a mission, you know, to, to try and spread happiness and a little bit of good and drink a lot of beer and 
make friends everywhere we go. Um, I'm oh, just basically done. That's on a side note. Um, do you, you know, have you taken any sort of I don't know, training in sword wielding? No, not at all. No, just self-taught. No, I, d I wouldn't trust myself. I don't even trust myself to peel an apple. Because uh, there was, I saw a video, I believe it was when you were doing the Dreamweaver tour, there was a video and you were doing, uh, you were doing, what was it? It wasn't history of a time to come. I think it was cautionary. I think, huh? Dreamweaver? Was it, it was for that tour. I yeah. believe it was uh, cautionary. I think it was either Hosanna and Exodus, or, uh, and you know, you go back behind. You know, the film wasn't that good because I imagine it must be copied a million times. But uh, you grab, you go behind and grab a sword out from behind, and you know, you're yeah. That was just what I did for that one song, just as a stage prop. I don't do that anymore with Skyclad. Yeah. There's no more, no more swords, and the images change quite a lot now. You know. All right. I was just curious because. Oh. Just curious, you know, if that, if that ever led to problems with Man of War, you know, you guys, yeah. you know, raiding you in the middle of the night, you know, Vikings at the gate. Um, yeah, it was just... So, um, I really can't think of too much more other than, you know, people well, are going to be waiting. Good, we have things we've talked about a few things anyway. Also, on the back of the Prince of the Poverty line, there's a circle with a bar through it. Yeah. What is what does that symbol mean? That's the symbol of the um, the underground system in London. You know the London Underground. Oh. All right. The tube tube station sign. All right. Um, it's different colours. It's not the Celtic not work on it. Uh, but we wanted um, like to do like the tube line because that's where a lot of homeless people sleep and beg. You know, in England, and um, the 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 line with the track listings on is like the lines where they have the different stations on the tube line. Okay, because uh, I don't know the circle with the with the bar. So it reminded me. There's uh, I can't remember exactly what time period it is, but at a certain point, Irish Irish swords had a circle, and it there was a dash in the middle of it, and sometimes right. it would extend it towards. To do with that, we so, wanted to get like the but, the feeling of the underground, but make it look like old, you know. Uh, sort of a Celtic feel to it. Well, you know, that, best to ask these questions. Uh -huh. Um, other than that, I can't really, is there anything you'd like to add? Just hello to our fans in the US, and we, we hope to see you all on tour in October. So thanks for buying the records. All right, and hopefully they can get them all distributed good, like they used to be. So, but, do you, uh, just, do you know why noise basically just drop from America? I've no idea at all. No idea. I'm happy the back though. Now it's good to be out here and doing some press. Alright. When's the last time you were in America? Uh, when I was 15. I've, um, I've got relatives in California and I went to see them when I was 15. So I've not been out here since then. Alright. How old are you? Uh, too old. I'm tw uh, 27. Alright. <laughs> Basically, my answer I always give people is I'm ageless. <laughs> so, <laughs> but all right. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank and, you very much. You know. Pleasure. Thank you. Uh, see you soon. Bye bye. Bye. Tuesday, 2:14 p.m. Line two.